Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we move on here and we're going to be diving into the series for the Boston Red Sox where they just took two out of three against the Oakland Athletics and are further increasing their chances of being in a playoff position when this is all said and done. So we're going to be running through the three game series and talking about where they stand overall here. So game one, the Red Sox won 12 to nine. They were really powered by an eight run second inning that was able to pretty much, you know, carry them the length of the way here. Uh, We saw all nine starters end up scoring a run in this game. I think that all happened in the second inning as well. So, you know, really impressive there. We saw Willier Abreu, who was phenomenal this series as a whole, break out of an 0 for 16 slump with a home run in that second inning that seemed to, you know, set it off on the right tone. And, you know, in that same inning, like I mentioned, it was an avalanche of Red Sox offense as it was Abreu. And then immediately after, we got a Dom Smith home run on the first pitch. So, you know, the Sox were really able to put it on there. Um, They ended up giving Oakland's pitcher um, Estes. I'll double check the uh, pronunciation on that, but gave him the Joey Estes, the shortest... Estes, yeah, gave him the shortest start of his career, just one and two thirds innings, and he was out of there pretty quick. But on the other end for the Red Sox, it was a weird start for Brian Bayo, who, of course, the Red Sox gave the massive contract extension to last offseason. We're hoping that he was going to emerge as their ace, and that just has not been the case so far this season. And like I mentioned, it wasn't a bad start necessarily for Bayo, but it was definitely a strange one and felt like it could have been feeling a lot better. So he had a career high 11 strikeouts, which is something to, you know, kind of feel good about. Now, it's not exactly Bayo's MO, considering the fact that he's a little bit more of a contact pitcher. And, you know, the punch outs are cool. You're never going to complain about those, but. You know, you're also talking about the Oakland Athletics where they strike out outside of the Mariners more than anybody in the MLB. But the first 10 outs were all recorded on Bayo strikeouts. But during that same stretch there in both the first and second inning, we saw a significant amount of of, uh, traffic on the bases where in this game, you know, again, five and a thirds inning, nine hits, two walks, and ended up allowing five earned runs. Now, I think that ultimately, if you go to that sixth inning where it was Lawrence Butler who ended up just mashing a changeup that Bayo left a little bit too much over the plate, you know, you take away that one pitch and, you know, Bayo gets out of that that situation clean. We're looking at this start a lot differently, but part of the issue for Bayo is that we are seeing him just too consistently allowing the long ball and that some of the contact, again, contact is sort of what he does. He is a pitcher that since he's come up in the ma- into the majors, induces a lot of ground balls but when that contact is loud I mean it's really loud Butler hit this thing I think the official thing the official distance was 457 feet and you know again this is a a situation where at this point Bayo I mean I I was having this debate with some friends as to if the Red Sox were, weren't were winning by as much as they were, would Bayo have even still been in the game? I mean, Cora and this pitching staff, the way that they haven't really gotten a ton of quality starts in the past week or so, could definitely have leaned on him and probably for that reason could have seen him go out a little bit longer. But at that point, Bayo's pitch count was running pretty high up. And again, that... Butler pitch 
uh, that Butler home run just ultimately ended his game where that was a three-run home run and the A's were able to keep it a little bit closer. You know, Bayo has just been in this weird stretch as of late where, you know, he had a pretty good start against the Marlins and you feel like that was maybe something to build off of. Granted, it's the Marlins and that offense has been very bad this year. So I don't really know where you stand on the evaluation of Bayo up to this point. But, you know, when you get that type of production from your offense, it obviously makes things a lot easier for them. Game two went to the Athletics where they won 5-2. to two. The Red Sox offense just did not have that same juice. Um, they ha- We've seen them have their moments struggling against left-handed pitching. It hasn't been quite as drastic of a drop-off as I thought from an eye test perspective, but you know, across the board, they are a top 10 offense in the league, but against left-handed pitching, those numbers become a lot more pedestrian, and J.P. Sears kind of carved them up in this game. Five and two-thirds innings pitched, four hits, two walks, eight strikeouts, and just one earned run that came on a Rob Ref Snyder solo shot in the sixth inning, so really just just one bad pitch that got away from him. You know, he did load the bases in the first inning, but after he got out of that, it was pretty much smooth sailing for him. When Ref Snyder went yard, Sears at that point was over the 100 pitch mark. He threw a career high 114 pitches, so he was very impressive in my opinion in this game. He also got a, another big performance from Lawrence Butler, who is somebody A's fans are probably feeling very good about after this series where you know he had the three-run shot in game one in this game. Uh, Four plate appearances, three at-bats, two hits, a walk, and two RBIs. So, you know, he was very productive once again. And this is another situation where you feel pretty weird about how to evaluate the start from the Boston pitcher. This time it was Nick Pavetta. Six and two-thirds innings pitched. He allowed six hits. He struck out ten, but he allowed four earned runs, you know, Another situation where, you know, the strikeouts were were dealing for him. At one point, it was around the third, fourth inning, he struck out eight straight batters, which was very impressive, but um, the... The bad out inning came in that third where he got hit around a little bit. Core and then a couple extra runs, you know, put in there in the seventh inning. Core admitted that he probably left Pavetta in there a little bit too long. He ended up throwing 105 pitches. This is the second time that he's thrown over 100 this season. In that seventh inning, it was Max Schumann who also had, you know, from a bottom of the lineup guy, had himself a pretty nice series. Um, ended up scoring in this inning, plus he had the big throw from center field to hose down Jamie Westbrook at the plate on that Rafaela double later in this game. But Schumann and J.J. Blade strung together a couple hits in the seventh that led to another earned run and ended Pavetta's night, you know, In this game, though, as much as Pavetta, again, kind of hard to evaluate ultimately where to feel about this. The offense was just not enough. They had their chances. The fifth inning, like I mentioned, it was Westbrook being thrown out at home plate. That was after he reached off of an error. And Rafaela, who Rafaela had a pretty nice series in this one as well, but weren't able to convert there. Seventh inning, they loaded the bases, but Devers ended up grounding out. Last two games of this series weren't great for him, and ultimately, just not enough production from the offense in this one. And then game three, rubber match with the Athletics, definitely for where the Red Sox, who had won, I think it was six of seven games at that po- at that point, not necessarily wanting to be in this type of a game against the athletics but ultimately it was kind of a no sweat one for for them where you could just feel that it was different from the first inning on because just like game two they loaded the bases with two outs once again felt like maybe they weren't going to be able to capitalize but this time around they did um you know Luis Medina just never really seemed to settle into this game his control was a little bit all over the place the Red Sox with good dis- with good plate discipline were able to take advantage Masataka Yoshida with a big game for himself in this one he was able to come through for them 
get the offense going with three runs in the first inning. And then from there on out, Masa did come back around with a home run later in the game, along with Wong and Abreu to put up the seven in this game. And, you know, ultimately just close out the athletics. Tanner Houck was very due for a big time start. The all-star that is going to be participating in the all-star game for the first time in his career on Tuesday had been coming off of debatably his two worst starts of the season versus the Padres and the Yankees. And this time around, he was excellent. Six innings pitched, just two hits, uh, a few walks in there as well. Six strikeouts, zero earned runs. Outside of a sixth inning where he ran into some traffic and was able to get out of it, and Alex Cora really commended him for his ability to pull that one out. Thought that he was overall excellent and... You know, the offense just bouncing back in this game, which was huge for them. But, you know, ultimately for the Sox, they are coming into a really big weekend where they are going to be facing the Kansas City Royals, who are at this point, let me double check the number. I think it was one and a half going into last night's game. Um, now, after yesterday, it is one game back. The Kansas City Royals are of the Red Sox for that final wild card spot. So definitely going to be an important one for the Sox internally. And then, you know, across the division, the Baltimore Orioles and New York Yankees are facing off in a series. Both of them coming off of series losses. The Orioles just lost twice just got swept by the Cubs and were outscored 21 to two in that series. The Yankees lost their series to the Tampa Bay Rays. So the Red Sox are in a weird position right now where, you know, if things break their way, they could end up second in the American league East by the all-star break. But if they, you know, end up dropping this series to the Royals, if they get swept, I mean, they will be, you know, outside of the playoffs altogether. So a little bit of a volatile weekend ahead. And obviously the eyes are on the all-star break, but the Red Sox don't really have the possibility to, you know, take their foot off the gas just yet. But over this series, we saw manager Alex Cora surpass Bill Car Bill Kerrigan for the uh, fourth all-time spot in terms of wins by a Red Sox manager and that does lead to you know further speculation about what is to come with the with the Red Sox and whether or not they have plans to bring back Cora moving forward so we are going to be diving into that conversation next but first we have to take a quick break don't go anywhere we will be right back <laughs> 